Hi, welcome to this Tarot Love Reading. My name's Sophia. Welcome to this community. So what I'm picking up is a kind of a, I would say a fiery, more of a sexual energy. So it's to do with the lower chakras. Um, it's about pushing you to a determination to do something. So that spark, that sexual energy, um, sexual desire towards your person, that's kind of, I wouldn't say igniting, but igniting at the moment, because it's always there, but that's the kind of energy I'm picking up at the moment. So let, what's going on, you lot? <coughs> right, Randy is what I say, uh, or horny, <laughs> but let's see. Let's see what the cards say, because that's all I'm kind of getting. Uh, it's not giving me much more than that. So let's jump in. What's going on for the collective for the weekend or for whenever you take uh, action steps on this please check out the uh, description box tons of stuff email support facebook group uh uh david with his keep fit the website has everything loads of people check out everyone on his channel as well <clears throat> might resonate with them more than just this reading all right let's jump in it's tidying up loose ends there's that sexual energy which i'm talking about the knight of wands so let's see what this is about yes yeah, to do with the connection so they might be getting you or your person feeling more attracted to you at this moment that pushes that pushes you to take action on stuff because obviously if you've got a desire and a spark for something you want to go towards it so maybe that's what's that's well anyway let's start so the Knight of Wands and the Lovers is the most... Oh, there it is as well. Uh, the Emperor, the Six of Wands, the Lovers. This is that fighting for that hot passion, desire. See the flames in the background. Uh, Aries is self. This is about fighting for your wishes and desires the Aries, having the strength he's got muscles to go do that and it's the it's the emperor so it's the masculine but when it talks about the masculine if you're a woman that's watching this is about getting the the passion and desire to fight for your desires which is getting into your masculine so anything that's out of your comfort zone that is about um getting into your masculine to take you out of that comfort zone it doesn't like for example say you don't like to um explore more sexual activities right a sex program loads of stuff and tips and tricks to do on there right to spruce up your sex life then um that's getting into your masculine if you're a woman how to do that to you know sexy underwears turn up at the door and you know you know all the hollywood films and and a woman turns up at the door and she's naked and she just takes all the i don't know sexual energy here but i'll get into the cards she just opens it up i, I when i was with my person uh before in in marriage and stuff i was like fuck off i ain't doing that <laughs> nah i ain't doing none of that kind of stuff right uh that's because there was no spark there was no sexual passion there was no desire to do it for that person this is this i don't feel it's connected with um sex but i feel it's about oh, okay chariots in reverse here so let's see what's going on there this is about like i said i feel it's more about using that desire because we are all magicians the magician is the actual um channelers tower readers of uh which is a magician card is about information as above so below how you manifest on this reality and manifestation the magician card is manipulation of form form is energy so this is about manipulation of the sexual energy to manifest your wishes and desires to become victorious right and this is regardless of what other people because 
uh, six of wands is victory, the next card. Five of wands is other people. So push past other people's perceptions of what um, it is to be victorious. So, for example, say your person likes sexual stuff. I'm getting sexual energy. Just saying, right? Likes is you know, most masculine do, right? But you know, would desire you to open the door with your coat like that or something like that, right? And you're bothered about what other people think of you, which why would they know you do that anyway? But maybe your upbringing is is not to do that. Like I said, the first card is having the strength to push forward. It's about you getting into your masculine and push forward with that. But it doesn't have to be sexual stuff. It could be with a knight of wands here about how you perceive it to be. Like when my, I'm sure if I had loads of friends and family and I spoke about um, how David used to come see me when we initially got together, they would no doubt say he's just coming round for Shaq. No doubt, right? And that is like, but how I saw it was like, you call it a Shaq. I say he's coming all the way for after work to come and chill with me, right? But it was like, he'll come from work, a night shift, stay up for a couple of hours, sleep, and then go in the morning. It's changing your perception on how you see it. But I was like, I, did, I didn't care. I, I, I appreciated that he used to come round. But that's casual. This is changing your perception on how you, you're meeting up your person. Maybe you're seeing it, it's like with the lover's card to the knight of wands. I said these two cards are very important to me in this reading. It's like maybe you're seeing your person as casual, but it's actual love. The King of Swords, the Chariot in Reverse, and the Knight of Wands. What's at the bottom? Yeah, okay, balance. These are these cards. Show you quick. Yeah, so this is about with the yeah logicating. Mm, you're yeah, there's something about logicating why you shouldn't take the strength to go. I feel this is you. All the well, apart from the lovers, majority of this is men in these cards. So it's about getting into your masculine because I feel this energy is to do with you. And why I say that is you because the masculines love that sexual they're more heightened sexually so it, it, it it's about explaining you need the sex program here because it explains the differences of how masculine how men i call it how men tick right how they feel and think differently sexually so maybe you need to know that and underneath that the Emperor, the King of Swords, it's like, yes, yeah, Sophia, I'm getting into my masculine, but I'm logicating how to do it the correct way. So it's like, it's not like, okay, what I'm getting here is like, say you meet your person and they come round and you have sex with them. You're logicating, yeah, that's that's that that's me being outrageous and out of the box because I think that's casual because no one knows about us, you know, there's not a ring on it uh, and all this kind of thing. But I'm like, that's just sex to your person, right? I don't know, this is a sexual reading. You're, you're, it's like, but you're like, yeah, no, that's risky because it's casual. And I'm like, but you're not doing any stuff sexual, sex master program. Need the sex master program. Let me get into it. chariot. Yeah, you're not pushing it forwards. This is blocks. This could be, um, like I said, with, um, my relationships in the past, uh, I didn't really do much sexual stuff um, because I wasn't felt to do that. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a need or desire and stuff like that. And this is like pushing past that to become victorious. The, the, the thing is, is with the, um, the twin flame, 
people moan about how long it takes, but there's a lot to learn. And now they're telling you about the sex stuff. So, for example, you might be working on your sexual abuse, but um, you're not spicing up your sex life. Do you know how many erogenous zones within our body that heighten us sexually and, you know, make us relaxed and chilled and stuff like that, which is untapped into? The twin flame, the twin flame contract, and it's wands, and that's why it's relevant here, because uh, there's loads of passion and desire. It's about everything. People, there's so many entities that want to live on this planet, because this planet is very unique. It's the experience. But people experience fuck all. Really, they experience fuck all. And this reading is about feelings. You see the hands from up above. Feelings. And literally feelings. Your version of feeling is feeling love. I'm like, um, this is more than just that. And this is about how your person feels love as well. Because if you're watching and you're the woman or even, you know, the man, how men think here, how they feel love sexually as well. You're not, you're like, you might say my person doesn't address to my needs. He doesn't say he loves me. He doesn't tell family about me. You know, that's not nurturing me. But you don't understand about nurturing of a guy. And that's pretty much their sexual needs. It's not just about having wham, bam, thank you, man. The casualness. So I said, this initial desire, the initial energy was about the, the wands. And the wands is sex. The actual wand itself uh, is an erect penis, right? It, that's what it represents. So this is about that as well. Understanding sex, the sex mastery. I don't know what else to say here. This is understanding that it's not sexual, it's, it's not just sex. Understanding that you, you have your person come to you and the sex is great. Why is that? Because you have a connection with your person. Because their touch, how they make you feel. It's like focus, it's a lot of the sexual um, aspects. It's like you're just using it. You're just saying, no, they just come around casually. It's like it's more than that. It's like, like I said, this is like from upstairs. The lovers to the Knight of Wands is it's like this is more than just casual. You know that. You know it's more than it's just casual. There's something like that with this. Why is there a chariot in reverse? Yeah, it's like understanding that from your inside is why from your upbringing you're not like. I remember when I was dating, when I was younger, I just dated, you know, anyone who asked me out, the he or she will do. And later on in life, I didn't care. I was meeting people and I was like, okay, uh, maybe I don't fancy you to myself, but I'll still give you the opportunity and let's go and have a meal or something. And I was meeting a lot of people and I felt funny because of like my son would like, you know, because normally I'm, uh, I'm indoors and I go, where are you going? And I'll go, I'm, uh, you know, I'm meeting someone for a date. And then he'll say, where are you going? And I'll say, I'm meeting someone for a date. And because this is about other people as well. And I had to sit and explain to my son, I don't know if he was sitting down, but I said to him, listen, this is what you need to do as well. What happens in this life if people just go on a date and they go, oh, it we went okay, and you meet them again. I said, this might seem like I'm dating a lot. I said, but I'm picking someone who I really want to be with. And this is this. This is understanding the concept of why you're with someone. You've got someone with a massive passion, desire and everything, but you need to get the strength to stop seeing it as just sex and understand the big, bigger picture of it. So to my son, he might think, oh, you're dating a lot of people. You're always going on date. You're always dating loads of people. I'm like, I'm not actually dating them. I'm meeting them, seeing if I get on. And then I'm like, nah, see you later. Might go on date two. Right. And then, you know, move on. And that's what I taught my son. I said, never settle. If you're with a girl and she's unhappy, don't settle. I said, it doesn't matter what you think, if I like her or not, don't settle. Right. And that's what this is about. You've got someone you've got this heightened connection with. Very, um, you know, a, a strong mind as well. You've got a good connection on how you communicate with each other. Uh, you love each other. 
but you're not pushing it forward victoriously because you're bothered from what other people think and feel about like you're dating someone who's casual or is there something about this casualness they're in and out they're not going to meet you every week or something like that that's with this or how you meet them right oh you just meet and chat in the car for ages you know it's like don't they want to step it up you there's something about casualness and stuff like this and it's like but you know it's divine you know when you meet them they balance you out you can have someone like uh who does it by the rules that whoever makes these rules of society you know let's meet let's go for dinner then you know then let me meet your family yeah let me meet, meet the girls let me meet the lads then you know and, and, and then i'll propose then we get married you can get someone like that but this passion this desire this oneness how they make you feel that spark all of that no you won't get that I was married to someone who didn't have none of that spark and desire. If you know me, I was living with uh, uh, someone who was my fiance, I was getting married to, right? As soon as I met David again, because we had a gap, we, 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 we didn't see each other for four years. I didn't know he was a twin flame in case you think, oh my gosh, I've got to have this gap for four years. No, uh, I met him the first time round and I was asleep, put it that way. Then nine months later, there was drama. Come on, twin flame. So we separated. During that four years, I met someone else and uh, I got engaged and we lived together. Right? Uh, David knocked out a few more kids during that time. Then he contacted me and we met up again. That first date, right? All the flame, the passion, the desire is when I first met him, which happens generally every time you meet him, right, or her right, that generally is always there, that came back, and I knew instantly to get rid of my fiancé, I never told David, unless he listens, I don't know if I told him to his face, might have done once, but I knew if I weren't going to nail David, I had no intentions of nailing David when I met him, he said, let's just meet up, right, I thought, if I don't feel like that, I'm, I'm not going to be with anybody, until I feel like this, or I'm going to be with David, that's what I thought, right and that's this didn't matter i was just meeting him as a friend didn't matter if i met him just casual over i had someone who was stable living with me financially great planning to get married blah 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 i didn't feel that this is this feel the connection with the hands feel this connection and stop focused on the casualness the in and out the whatever you're thinking it is this is about doing more than thinking about that it's about with the bottom of the deck. Sometimes I bring it out, sometimes I don't. Creating your own balance by what they're doing over there. Don't watch that, right? You create balance from what you get from this relationship, not from what you expect them to give you. With the time when David came and he comes around and he used to come around and he used to just do that, just come around, uh, sleep over, go to work. I got everything. I, I appreciate, I appreciate, I appreciated that he came from a twelve-hour night shift. Then it was about an hour to get to me, and I, and then I could see he was knackered and he was drained. But he tried to stay up for a couple of hours, to, so he didn't just come have sex and sleep, right? Uh, uh, he used to eat as well, so we had something. You know, I appreciated it all, and that's how I created balance within that time I saw him. And then it moved forward. And that's what you have to, uh, well, it's up to you if you do it that way. But that's what this is about. Appreciating what you get at the initial beginning, maybe. And fighting for it. Because victory will come in if you do it that way. I feel it's slightly connected with the energy of yesterday's reading of like victories coming in. Right. But it's how you see the relationship. If you're working, if you've got a problem with what your relationship, how you're meeting them, how you're seeing them and all that kind of thing, you're not doing enough inner work. You're still following some kind of thought form or tradition of other people, how they how you want people to see you to be. Who gives a shit of how other people see you to be? You shouldn't really. You shouldn't really. It's quite hard because you're brought up with that 
that tradition, that religion from television of how people see you. I get that, but it can change, right? It can change. It's a program. You just got to change the program, right? Knight of Pentacles, Three of Cups, Ten of Swords. Yeah, so you might be uh, thinking this is slow because of the third party and getting stabbed in the back with these. Oh, there's a, another card. With these three cards. But this card just came out or was there, Knight of Cups. This is like, but you're not focused on the, on the love element of it. Knight of Cups. It's like you feel how they really are on the inside. You really do. You really feel how they are inside. And you love that. But it's like the Knight of Pentacles is your focus on the physical, not the cups. Physically, how this looks is like he's got someone else. Over. I, like I said, I'm always saying it on the channel. I don't care if you lot think I... I, um, I you can't break up a marriage. People always talk about that. You know, you're breaking up a marriage. I'm like... If I'm married to David and I'm happy to David, Brad Pitt, whoever, can knock on the door, swing his willy around and say, come, leave David. I wouldn't leave, would I? If I love David and I'm happily married, you can't, if, unless you're unhappy, then you get tempted, right? Yeah. So you can't break up a marriage, right? You cannot. No one would tell me, I don't care who it is, how much money to break up someone you want to be with. Only if it's shitty and unhappy, right? then something happens there, right? Yes, people may cheat here and there and stuff like that, and it's a one-off, and then they go back and they recognize who they want to be with, lessons learned, something like that. But this is like, now this is casual. There's a third party and stuff like that. It's stabbing me in the back, and I'm like, you know that connection's different. When David came back around the set, first time I met David, I, li I, I fell for the 3D bullshit, I was asleep, I listened to other people, the television, he should be doing it this way, this way, this way, this way, right? Second time he came back around, I was like, fucking hell, this connection, I didn't even know what, you know, I'm not even one into the like, twin flame connection, it was like, this is different, this is unique, I doubt I'm going to meet anyone I feel like this. I'm going to try to nail his ass. I didn't care what he was going for over there. I was like, if he meets me, that's on him. It's the same what I was trying to say with the children. If David doesn't tell his children about me, right, um, that's on him. I ask, you want me to see the kids? And I, and I say to him, listen, I'm not going to keep saying it. When you're ready, when you want to, you tell me. Right about if you want me to meet the kids, right? But I say, how are they? Well, you know, the birthday and blah blah blah. That's on him. You got to leave the stuff for them and make this kind of work for you in the situation that's it you you have now. And I say it's more than just your person. It's to do with life stuff. Say you want to be a Hollywood superstar. Say you're an accountant or a dentist or a doctor, and you're making good money. And you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. Or I never wanted to do it anyway. I'm just following my family tradition. And you have to pack up everything, sell everything, and go be a, a student, start again in Las Vegas, you know, on a bar, you know, doing some kind of bar work but, but and studying theatre. It's like taking the risk to start again. How will people see it? And, it, you know, that's quite casual at the moment. But this is like, I keep saying my readings are long term of what you really want it to be. Because the Knight of Pentacles is here. It's about the steady, easy, steady, building something stable. It's like people in mission, and Andrea asked this question. Hi, Andrea. If she watches. She was asking about, you know, just mission question. And I said, I'm trying to, the next few years with mission, I've been always saying this, I'm going to do property. And I want to do properties for people with disabilities and stuff like that. And I said, that's a long-term goal. But it's a steady income of a passive um, income for the long-term goal. That's where I'm bringing this. So we get a benefit from it with the Six of Pentacles at the bottom. Because obviously we're going to be getting that additional income. And plus we're helping people with disabilities have more better homes. Because we're more passionate, we're more making sure everything's good for them and stuff like that in the home. 
So this, but that is not a pentacle. So that's a long-term goal. Or just doing, right, just tarot and just book me for an extended reading. That's not really what this connection teaches people. That's short-term. The, the planet is, everybody is a fast lane. The microwave, you know, the microwave society. Want everything so quickly. Your person teaches you with the Knight of Pentacles has come out loads of times in my reading. It's slow and steady ring wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race. And that's how it is. Your person learns to trust you, learns to trust that you're not going to stab him in the back like the friends and family do over there, that you're not going to manipulate him to get married. You don't want to just spit out loads of kids. You're ready to be there. You're working on yourself. You're not reliant on them. That takes time for him or her to trust you too. But at the moment, it's it's like, stop. It's, it's kind of logicating how to build with the uh, the king of swords with the emperor. Logicating how to build and having the strength to move forward to victory, to get your love. And what you feel is your version of love, not other people's version of love. That's what it is. David's not with anyone. I don't feel there's third party, unless it depends how much work you're doing, right? The third party over there, they're generally not what I'm picking up in readings, but it depends how much work you're doing, not sleeping with them. But this could be, depends, right? You kind of know. But uh, I, this isn't about that. But this is about, like, for I say, if he has a life with you over here and a life over there, right, this is about building the life with you so they can leave that life over there. What you want them to do is just quickly leave that, but then they might have this shitty life with you over there because you want them to build the same stuff that they built over there, which didn't work. It's insanity. So that's why it's taking longer. There's something about children as well. I keep picking up about this children stuff. Maybe you're worried about, or you want to see their children or something like that, or you want your children to see, him to see your children and stuff, stuff like that. If my mum was in an uh, unhappy marriage, right, and she said it was done, because generally they're in relationships, third-party relationships over there. It's done. It's dead. It's done. They just stay there for the kids. They stay there for family, friends, whatever. It's not really working, like I said. Because if it was working, they wouldn't even be seeing you or sleeping with you or doing any of that in the first place. Men are not just born whores, right? That's what that's what the television people, you just, they go out there and play. They don't, right? They might be promiscuous from some a kind of abuse, but they're trying to find that spark, the desire, to then settle down with that person, right? Which is a process. So, like, if they've got children, you've got children, and if my mum said to me, yeah, I was with your dad, but we separated, and it wasn't really going anywhere, and so I met someone, right? And I was with that person for 15 years, right? And I say, well, why didn't you tell me about it? And she said, I just didn't right? I, I, would I be overly upset? I don't think so. Well, I should know who you're dating and blah, blah, blah. There's something about that you're so worried about seeing their children. Is it for show for your side? If I said, my mum said that to me, and, uh, I, I, you know, the Hollywoods make it out like you go, what about your dad, the dad and all this kind of thing? I hope this makes sense. It's like, you got to focus on what's good for you. And if your person thinks what they're doing is good for them, you have to make balance in what they're saying what's good for them. Then they make them accountable and responsible for their actions of what they're doing. Instead of, no, that's wrong, just do it this way. Because you're logicating something that you should be building of your own self, of what you want, wishes and desires, not from their logic of what they think. You're trying to change their mind is what I'm trying to say of what they're doing instead of, <coughs> okay, well, my person doesn't want me to see their children, something like that. That's fine. That's what he has to deal with when they're older, but I still don't see that being an issue. If I don't ever see David's children and they, he's like, okay, I'll introduce you to them when they're 16, when they're all 16 because they're older and mums can't tell them anything, for example, right? Uh, um, that would be 16 years basically without me knowing them just this is an example this isn't what's happening but just let's say that would that be an issue why would that be an issue there's something here with children 
as well. Why would that be an issue? That's for if they say say to David, why don't you tell me about your or this person? Was you cheating on my mum? You say no, we're done. We weren't living together. We're never living together. We was just married. We didn't separate. Whatever. That relationship was done. This is just my partner I had and no one really knew about it. There's something like that here. You know, but this person was for me, this person I love. Well, I just want to interfere and they explain the situation to the children. There's something here about logicating it correctly for you about the third party and stop seeing it as a stab in the back. See it as how it is. See it clearly. See it for what it is. That's the word they want you to from upstairs. See it from what it is and create balance in your world of what the situation is. Because that's what I feel. I feel they're committing to you, like the reading I said yesterday. There's some victory coming in which they're committing to you, but the third party is still there. But you're seeing it as they're coming to you casual and they're seeing someone else. You have to learn to work counselling. Book the stuff in the community. It's up to you, isn't it? Right? It's up to you. I've got that one. Path. It's a part of your path. I said that yesterday. 11-11. This is part of the path or things that's changing about you evolving. Something might happen. Yeah, like this, you might be, yeah, a tower coming in. This might be the tower of, yeah, you're committing to me, but you're still connected with the third party. There's something here with that. But it's like, They're giving me another way of saying it. See it like as if, say you're in a cleaning job, and after the cleaning job, you're doing theatre to go towards being a Hollywood actor, right? That's how you see it. There's an end goal of being something else. And that's kind of how your person is. They're like working in the cleaning job but they've got an end goal with you and that's how you've got to there's longevity i'm always saying it like that but you're not building it you want your person or you to quit the cleaning job to 100 percent prove to who that you want to go for the hollywood it's like no there's other ways of doing it i'm not getting these readings lately I hope you lot are, because I'm not I'm not feeling them. <clears throat> Let's close it out with a couple of these. Why well, have? Okay, from the beginning. I have always loved you. I asked why I have. So they've all a past life. Yeah, maybe that's what you got to do as well. Think about uh, when you're with them, you feel that connection of past life, like you've known them. They have always loved you, right? That sounds cheesy. Hopefully David's not watching. But like when I met David, it was like this feeling of homeliness. Like, and I'm not really spiritual. Um, you know, I didn't meet him and think like, I was doing like Reiki acupuncture, doing tarot when I met him or anything like that. But there was this, it was weird. It was like comfortability. That's the word. The comfortability of kind of knowing him, right? And when you get onto the twin flame journey, you kind of know about the past life and you was married to them in past life and all this kind of thing. And that's what this is. I have always loved you. You don't have that with another connection. So this casualness of when you're meeting them, this reading is like, think of all of that, what you have, right? With such high, you get such a low. And that's what it is. It's the polarities of planet Earth. And then it teaches you to balance both of them out. So that's what this is. I feel this huge pull to you and it scares me. The push and the pull, you don't really have that with other people, right? Uh, soulmates, you don't really have that. You just get back with them because of, like you're bored or you're used to them or you know they half the mortgage with them there's no push and pull this desire this kind of thing and i know how much i now know how much i need you in my life 
like I said, this reading is focused on the bigger picture of when you meet that person. So you know how much you need them in your life. And it's not a need, but do you see what I mean? This is about um, that, really. And like I said, the sexual desire, the passion, all of that, the spark, um, wanting you to be more, wanting you to change planet Earth, all that is from the twin flame. Stop focusing on, oh, they're, just, they're with the third party and they're stabbing me in the back. Stop focusing on the negative, negative fucking Nancys, right? Focus on the positive of what the connection's about, right? Fo focus on the path. The alien side of it, what you're here to do, save this planet. Focus on the correct thing of it. 11 means path. 11, 11 means you and your person need to be on the correct path. All right. Speak to you later.